introduction. All yeah, right. All right. I'm recording. We've got this. We can upload on YouTube later. Don't worry about Craig. We know Craig is a little bit, you know. Rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, he's a little <laughs> bit finicky. He likes to work uh, pretty much never. So, uh, otherwise, we are we're the Crypto Basic Podcast, man. We're here. We do this every week at 11 a.m. on a Tuesday. I saw the numbers. We are not as good as uh, the uh, – there's another, like, basic-style cryptocurrency group that does this on here. So, But I think it's because of our time, not because of our content. And we're going to – Duh. We're going to randomly talk about some of the best stories – on our cryptocurrency, and we're gonna talk about some of our favorite, like uh, you know, comments and and things like that. So that's what we're gonna do. And then feel free to participate in the chat. We like to participate with the participators, and uh, and then someday we're gonna we're gonna convince somebody to get on the mic with us in the middle of this. So we've had a couple already. That's true. That's true. We did have a couple a couple weeks ago. It's been a while though. All right. Uh, the the. Main biggest story when I was looking last night was that Binance is now donating 100% of the listing fees that they swore they didn't have. <laughs> did they swear they didn't have them? That, well, it, they did because they're not really listing fees. They are – what happens is you <laughs> you put your application in and you're like, hey, we're, we're crypto basic coin and we want to get listed on Binance. In addition to saying all the reasons why you should be allowed on Binance, explaining your code and showing them how they can make the wallets and all that stuff, you also have to attach an amount of money that you're willing to give them. <laughs> so it's not really a listing fee and there's no specific number, but you have to kind of put it in your proposal that you're going to give them money. So um, that's how their listing fees worked before, and now they're going to be transparent about them and say how much they get and donate them all to a charity. <laughs> that, the, as they're saying in the chat, the first comment on that uh, on that uh, on that thing was, "Yeah, they're going to be donating to the to the BNB charity, which uh, which apparently is uh, run just by mine." Oh, you're right. I should have put that in there. I'm sorry. It's all good. Continue. Uh, uh, but uh, they they haven't said which charities they're going with yet, and. Um, and you know, still, still pretty cool. Uh, it's totally not a bribe. It's totally not a bribe at all. <laughs> all right, so I have a story here that it's actually further down the outline, but it just correlates so directly. But you know, they're making a big deal about the fact that they're donating these uh, uh, coins, and also they've just recently announced um, that they're delisting a group of coins. So. They send out a uh, here. Let me let me put the link real quick. But they sound they send out like a memo, basically saying every once in a while, when you know we're gonna do uh, quality reviews to make sure that the coins we're selling, uh, you know, are good coins. And then they give some of the parameters that they go over for transparency. They're like, okay, so um, how committed is the team to the project? How much activity is there? Uh, is there public communication? Is the network stable? Is the smart contract stable? All that kind of stuff. And, you know, they basically say once, if somebody doesn't pass, they're going to look at it further and possibly delist them. And then they announced these four coins, chat, uh, ICN, which is economy, uh, trig, which is triggers and, um, and then BCN, which is Bitcoin. But if you look at the thread, a lot of people are pointing out that there's, Really, a lot of hypocrisy in this because Bitcoin was considered to be a scam coin basically from the moment that it was launched. Right. And by the time it was accepted to Binance, it was like even, you know, superficial research would have revealed that they're a scam. So the question is really, OK, so did you guys just accept it because Binance is benefiting? Essentially taking a not a bribe. It's a not a bribe. <laughs> it's just something you throw in with your application. <laughs> no. Yeah. We're not saying you have to, just saying you can. Uh, well, the you know what they we say a lot of good stuff about Binance, but this has always been like one of the I don't know one of the like points that they've kind of been a little bit shady in. Yeah, shady to me isn't the right word, and and I and I see where you're coming from, but I, I almost look at this as 
them saying like we've created a situation that we can't really solve so like i think that there was probably a point in time where it made sense for an example an ico a lot of these icos have huge allotments for marketing and a lot of those marketing budgets are to try to get on the right exchanges so depending on what your project was and depending on how much you'd be willing to donate from that marketing budget like yeah like there is a lot of value in being listed on Binance. So I can, can see the point that like, yeah, you have a premium real estate in a digital, you know, cryptocurrency world, but at the same time, like it's hard to make everybody happy when you make the game this way. And, and I think that this like switching to charity is like a really interesting uh, way to handle it. It almost feels like they're in a boardroom and they're, they're just sitting around like, well, this is the game we've created. Uh, we believe that people, you know, should pay money for this, but people are, they're just railroading us for how much we're making on these, you know, br totally not a bribes. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I find this, I find this as a really interesting response that, you know, kind of makes it harder for me to criticize them. Hmm. No, I, I understand. But so I, I want to throw something extra in here that I wanted to do. It's the first time here on our, our cryptocurrency events. I wanted to play a game with you guys like we do on the podcast sometimes. Okay. I call it truth or conspiracy. So <laughs> there was a, a comment that was thrown into this discussion of these coins that were delisted. So what I want is your first impression, guys. Just to be clear, uh, Mike and Brent didn't get a chance to research this, so they're just going off of their instincts, all right? But here's the question. Somebody wrote, hmm, it's a bit shady, though, that these coins have been pumping hard for the past month. Now they are being delisted. And then somebody else said, well, you could call it a pump and dump. So, gentlemen, I want to play the game because we know we live in a post-truth world we can't believe anything but also <laughs> there's facts out there so tell tell me what is your instinct mike and brent any order truth or conspiracy uh well i mean i mean without looking at without looking at the charts my thought on this is they probably haven't been pumping any harder than most coins have in that same period of time interesting answer brent Excellent. so i would have to check that but that's my first thought <laughs> of course. Okay. Of course. This is what we would do before we research a crypto basic. The next step would be to research. And of course, I have done the research for you, gentlemen. So I will give the answer. But Mike, your turn. My Here's my first thought on this entire situation. If Bitcoin was in the top 30 and is a clear scam, I never knew that. And we're a, we do three, hour, three or four hours of content a week on crypto. A lot of it's news based. Like, if that is so obvious to Reddit and so obvious to the world, it was not obvious to me. And besides, even if this were true that they've been pumping hard the last month, oftentimes you have to witness a pump and dump develop before you can really like unravel all the pieces and then delist the project. Like sometimes these things have to play themselves out. Wow. Truly a man running for office, moving speech without giving an answer. <laughs> Michael, truth. <laughs> Or conspiracy. conspiracy. Please answer the question. All right. This is amazing. You are both wrong, and we are all right together. It's half true, half conspiracy. Two of these coins have, in fact, had a semi-pump-like pattern in the last month, and two of them have not had any fluctuation in price that is significant. So the lesson here is there's even shades of truth and conspiracy and you never know which way the game's gonna go <laughs> yeah i'm also sure that the that coins uh, i'm sh is bitcoin one of the ones that did not do the bump the pump uh that is correct it is yeah. one of the ones that did not good read what made you think that? they have a larger market cap so it's harder right. yeah, yeah it's same. harder to move them so like the other ones like could move in a pumpy pattern very very easily or even be targeted by pump and dump groups it takes a lot less liquidity to move a smaller cap coin in large directions. Yeah, correct. And just for for transparency, so the those of you that are listening, how I decided if there was a quote unquote pumpish like behavior, I just looked if there was a spike in price in the last month that was bigger than anything we've seen in the last three months, you know. And if and that's the case for Trigger and Chat, but not the other two. So what is Trigger Coin? Is that one of those things that like if you say the word Amy Schumer, it gets pumped? 
<laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. Like, Amy Schumer triggers the fuck out of Reddit, so. <laughs> uh... She triggers me too, man. Yeah. Oh, no, she sucks. But it is funny if, like, he say, like, that. there's this conundrum where, like, Reddit was, like, you know, backing all the the Democratic stuff, but then she got arrested, and it was like, oh, my God, I want to hate her, but, like, I also don't want to say good things about this guy. <laughs> Oh, I did want to add one thing, though, Mike, to, to what you said about, like, for example, Bitcoin, because I see here SGP shared something about, you know, Bitcoin <clears throat> being a scam and what happened. But the only clarification I want to make is it's OK for the for you or me to not be familiar because we're lay people. But the entire point, the the image that Binance is trying to sell is you can trust us like we do these reviews because we have a team of people that is going to look into this. So while it is totally acceptable for a layperson like you and me to not know that it is not acceptable for a big multi-billion dollar company that says it's looking out for us and protecting us from bad coins to miss something that is relatively obvious if you actually look into it. So it's still a knock on them. Yeah, I knew uh, I knew I'm, this was I'm a porn still. I knew I'm this was a scam from like some research to the point where I thought bite balls were a scam also. Like I uh I saw bite ball and I'm like, "Oh yeah, that's that scam." And I was like, "Oh wait, shit. Nope. That's a different coin." <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> All right, this is this is the big getting brought up by popular demand. Yeah, man. We, it, we it. clearly <laughs> should have been talking about this puzzle. This is uh, uh look, we already solved this puzzle, which is why we didn't want to bring it up. But we're letting the community kind of <laughs> kind of go through it for now. So there's yeah. there's this like image that if you solve the part of the image, if you go all Da Vinci Code on this thing, you're in theory going to be rewarded with 310 Bitcoin or some portion thereof based on finding each of the different things. So there have been plenty of these images in the past. Usually they contain like one Bitcoin, not 300, but the you know, I I don't know what to say about it other than like it's it's gonna be really, um, really really hard. There's four things you have to solve. Rewards are uh, point yeah, it, one. One of the things was already claimed. The there was an update today that said that the reward for the zero point two Bitcoin was already withdrawn. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, and so is the point one. So <laughs> that's an interesting sliding scale there. I, they're like. Guys, this is totally real. We okay. want you working on this puzzle for a very long time. To prove that it's real, there's there's a point one, a point two, a point three, and a three hundred and ten. So, you know. Yeah, this 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 is even worse than uh, the poker tournaments we play, guys. And uh, that's that's already pretty top heavy. This is the most ridiculous top heavy thing I've seen. <laughs> oh, I guess a regular lottery. Never mind. Regular lottery is the most top heavy. There's a conspiracy that they created this competition to to do money laundering so that somebody can win it and then be like, oh, like I want it legitimately through money laundering. That kind of makes sense. Um, I know some of these have been really, really hard. <laughs> like there was I was reading about one where they had to measure the number of pixels on a ribbon around something. And then that was like the cipher they needed to to, to crack the code. Um, so it, it was, you know, there's uh yeah, I mean, it whatever. If this is if this is real, right, then it probably is like money laundering like you said. No, All right, guys. What? No, you cannot make that leap from a possible conspiracy which is plausible to, you know what? Actually, that's probably what it is if it's real. <laughs> that's insanity. There's so much like Okay, well, uh, what is more like there's no incentive for somebody to give away 300 bitcoin. They could get the same response by giving away one. No, well, you can't get the same response by giving away one. Nah, you can because they have All the right. other. The other images were very popular. Brian, that's like saying that a lottery that gives away a million dollars gets the same incentive that a lottery that gives away three hundred million dollars. Their that's incentive is they take thirty percent of all the money. Yeah, but I okay, understood. That's fair, but clearly, people's incentive, the attention that people pay to it. Yeah, this is, is way, way bigger than a one bitcoin. Yeah, like, it's it, not even it debatable. Gains traction. Why do you think we came in here and literally five people were like, hey, 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 this thing, hey, 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 <laughs> hey, guys, hey, 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 which is great. Like, we wanted to know what we missed. We would have totally missed this, so we're very thankful you guys brought it to our attention. And but here's this is the, definitely cool. 
And here's the thing, until the last puzzle is solved, we don't really know if there's no other incentive because my guess is if you're going to put this much work into it, then the final clue, which is also going to get a ton of attention from the community, will reveal something about who it is or why they did it or whatever. Now, it, I'm not saying that the conspiracy theory is implausible. It has plausibility to it. I'm just saying, like, just because we see a train of thought that is plausible doesn't mean it's probable. Very similarly, the in the comments, I believe somebody even said that they, they traced the transactions back and the wallets that this came from, they just have a tremendous amount of Bitcoin. So, you know, obviously you can stage that if somehow, if you have enough resources, but I feel like, you know, it, it is also very plausible that this is a random miner from, you know, 2010 where you know somebody said he was getting that back then they were getting um what 50 every every block at 50 bitcoin every block so you know the early guys can definitely stash up a ton um you know i don't know where all these now billionaires are gonna what they're gonna do with their money but you know it, it's interesting like we, we talk about lottery winners how oftentimes lottery winners are really irresponsible with their money like becoming a bitcoin billionaire probably has some downsides as well maybe you decide to put 300 bitcoin in a puzzle like who knows i don't know i don't, I don't know any lottery winners that ran their own lottery with their money and didn't charge a vig so that's why i'm saying like there has to be some I, I, other I'm incentive open -minded. i'm very open-minded to this being a thing like it, it could be a <laughs> no, yeah, it could plausible. just be a trick but then why is he giving away four amounts like what is that the trick is that the smoke and mirrors like no that's what i'm saying like there's so, you know, winners some people are into this stuff, and I agree. the final thing is released, there could be other um, aspects. And here, all right, all right, wait, 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 let me stop you. Thing. Well, hold on, hold on. I want to make one prediction. Like, if this were uh, an, a way to uh, launder money to try to make it like legal, it's a huge mistake because you are putting. If that means that you're not an expert in this field, if you're not an expert in this field, right? You're putting something out into the world where people is going to get a ton of attention from people who really know what they're doing, who really understand these mm. these fields, and you're going to be able to make uh, wallets be traceable. Like, if this is a criminal conspiracy, this is the worst decision they ever made in their life. <laughs> Which, which do you think is more plausible? There's somebody out there that wants to give away $2 million in a puzzle? Or there's somebody out there that would like to, quote unquote, give away $2 million but give it to themselves so that there's a little bit of legitimacy to their money? Framed uh, that way, your your point is very well made. But at the same time, we, we just I just feel like there's such little information and this is such a new world that we're exploring. Okay, Brent, if you want to frame it in that way, I'm going to I'm going to frame it a different way for you. Imagine that somebody needs to find a way to launder millions of dollars and then somebody walks into the room and says, "You know what? I got a solution for you. Put a puzzle out there and let it, uh, thousands of people compete to try to solve it, right? It'll get a ton of attention and then award it to yourself and then I'll transfer it back to you." As opposed to all the other millions of ways that somebody could launder that kind of money, like ship it to an online casino that takes BTC and put a play a couple of, like do all kinds of like there's so many options Here's what i would do <laughs> yeah yeah like imagine the risk that that individual or group is exposing itself to not like just from the sheer amount of interest that this is going to generate kareem i think you your point is very well made but i don't think that most i don't know i think that that would not factor in a lot for people that are trying to do this I don't know. Like, we don't know where the uh, it, we'd have to trace the wallets back to see where the Bitcoin came from. It could have been, I don't know, it could have been part of Silk Road or something. I, I don't know. But the like, it just if I'm coming up with more most obvious explanations for why somebody would put a puzzle like this with this much, um, the, the all of the obvious explanations are nobody was ever going to win the 310, but they wanted to generate a, a lot of buzz, or nobody was ever going to win the 310 and they wanted to launder the money. But you know, or it's a publicity stunt, which is yet unrevealed because the puzzle hasn't been solved. Also, remember the pineapple fund? Correct. It was a very similar situation. They gave away a ton of money worth of Bitcoin. Yeah, but that was a very similar situation. No, but that was what? That's altruistic that they were actually doing philanthropy and like trying to make the world a better place. Are, are who knows where this is going to go? 
this is are you saying that they're not eccentric people that are going to do different things with their money this is again it's we have no it's, idea who the person is that the we possible... don't know that they're not doing all those things too can you think of any other example in history where somebody's given away two million dollars for funsies to like one random person for sure, there's plenty of examples. Are you? Is this even a serious question? I haven't looked them up. I don't know. Give me one, I, like one off the top of your head. Oh, you I feel can't like think you know of one, this. Brent. But there's gotta be a tremendous number of these. Like this definitely happens. Yeah. All right. This is one of those situations where it's a million possible motivations, a million possible reasons. It's just. Uh, I mean, I'll even go so far to say that Brent's reasons and logic are probably the favorites. But I think you're just the favorites against like 500 options. Not against the field. No shot. Right. Yeah, I'm saying against against all plausible scenarios, I don't, I don't think you're anywhere close to a favorite. I, right. I would say the that this person is going to solve their own, own puzzle is the favorite. I, Whether it's happens? specifically for money laundering or just because they wanted to generate buzz, give away 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.31 Bitcoin, then and then get buzz and get their own money, Like that is more likely to me than somebody actually getting it. That's reasonable. That's I, a lot I, of Bitcoin. It's a it's a thousand x jump from from second place to first place. Yes, and if this was giving away one Bitcoin, two Bitcoin, three Bitcoin, thirty Bitcoin, and three, and then like two seventy or whatever's left over, like yeah, that th then it would be it would seem a little bit I more agree. legitimate to me. Yeah. What? Okay. Final conspiracy though. It, what if it's Satoshi Nakamoto trying to find somebody that he can trust? Because. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's probably the man in the high castle. All right. <laughs> oh man. All right. What if it's this, Craig this Ray? Is definitely something that we're gonna have to. Uh, <laughs> no, Tivo, get out of my head. No, Tivo's a hundred percent correct. Craig Wright would not give away <laughs> three hundred and ten BTC. <laughs> Also, if it was Craig Wright that created that puzzle, it would have already been solved. Like, the, like within <laughs> ten minutes of being posted, somebody would have been like, "Did you copy paste this from like this puzzle Craig, creator?" Did copy, yeah. <laughs> Dude, what? No, I am the originator creator of this puzzle. <laughs> yeah, that would probably be like a massively like. Uh, sorry. All right, <laughs> we have to follow up with this story. This is pretty cool, um, but I guess we do have a few other stories to cover. I mean. Up to you guys. You yeah. Oh, yeah. No, we should on. we should keep going, man. All right. With friends like uh, this. Oh yeah. <laughs> so somebody posted. This is pretty cool. Uh, it made me realize that you guys are awful. Just kidding. <laughs> this guy is gifting his buddy for his birthday a full Bitcoin, and what he's asking the community is if they know of a way in which he can make it so that he can't spend it for ten years. So he wants to give his buddy a ledger with a Bitcoin that he can't spend for 10 years. So I want to talk about three things in this story, but I want to start out with how do you guys feel about that? Giving somebody a Bitcoin, but not letting them spend it for 10 years. That happens all the time. I mean, people yeah. give uh, give kids like stuff for their bar mitzvahs or their <coughs> or, you know, like even birthdays and stuff where they give them like bonds that they can't touch until you know, X years or they, or they put money in a trust that they don't get until they're 18. Like that's not even, uh, it's not even that well, weird, okay. but he's an adult. Okay. Sh I'm sure there's adult trust that you can set up. Yes. Okay. I have... Okay. Okay. All right. Great. What was the last time any of your friends have given you any amount of money? This has to be a scam. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this is on? money laundering for sure. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely money laundering. He's gonna I, he's gonna gift it to himself. <laughs> <laughs> so, second thing, I just wanted to because I learned something while I was reading about this. A couple of people in the community recommended using N lock time, and because I am not a coder and I'm not particularly knowledgeable, I didn't know what it was. Usually means I number. It up and right, but it's a feature on. Bitcoin that basically allows you to put in any transaction the minimum block or time that that can be added to a valid block, basically. So what what essentially happens is every transaction has a number, but they used to be automatically set to zero so that it could be inserted in the transaction at any time. And then there was a, an update with Bitcoin that for something that had to do with like fee sniping or something like that, it now automatically sets it to a recent block. But you can actually put something on there for a future block, uh, so it so it would have to wait that amount of time. So that was pretty interesting. Um, but it doesn't lock it up on the on the first end, right? 
like you could still in theory move it and then just like not be able to transfer it then yeah i think so i, I guess the way you would do it is then have a private wallet that's already set up with that destroy the keys and then give him the wallet that's going to receive it in 10 years okay yeah that that would be in theory yeah a way to do it yeah um and then here this was interesting because it goes one of the comments um really goes into like a whole thing about quantum computing there's like an argument about whether or not within that time period uh quantum computing could like break the keys somebody basically is implying that it could and then uh somebody responds uh basically saying that they don't understand quantum computer you have a interesting exchange there so i don't know i i just feel like that's interesting because my guess is that the majority of the community including ourselves we don't truly understand quantum computing where it is in its evolution its true potential we all have you know some superficial knowledge from things we've read um but it just kind of looms there in the background you know as like a potential super threat you know yeah, I, well, we we know it's coming, uh, but like I, even the experts don't know exactly like what iteration it's gonna have. Like we don't like it's just it's not really there yet, and the simulations that we can run are very rudimentary. So uh, like it's, that it, it is like this thing that we don't know what is gonna happen, and ideally, it's nice to see some coins that say that they're quantum resistant or whatever, but. No idea. No idea what's going on with quantum computing. And the only way we're going to, like, I don't think quantum computing is going to get in the hands of, like, an individual that's going to attack Bitcoin right away. So it's going to, like, the first people that grab quantum computing are going to be, like, in a lab somewhere at Microsoft or something like that. So. No, yeah, I agree with that part 100% that there is uh, an institutional safety net there, so to speak. But number one, that's only going to last for a certain period of time, right? In theory, depending on how. Expensive. Yeah, hopefully we have enough time to update networks in that in that case. If right. we see it and we're like, oh shit, this actually can break private keys in five minutes, like. Yeah, because that that's the other thing. Since we are dealing with something that is purely psychological in some ways, even the news that you know, let's say that there's only three quantum computing computers that can truly break. SHA-256, and they're in the hands of... But the fact that they even exist would completely uh, shake confidence in, in Bitcoin at that point, you know? Yeah. 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 Uh, f- Buy the future dip. Quantum right. <laughs> quantum computing is is our man bear pig. <laughs> oh, man. So. All right. Well, that's right. it for what we don't know about quantum computing. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. And, and obscure South Park references. Not yeah, that. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Like the only the only thing I would add about this oh. is that I think Bitcoin is probably the the wrong thing for ten years, uh, just because like th- yeah, everything we've discussed this quantum computing situation. There's <laughs> <Uh-oh>. so many. <laughs> Kirk, I don't know. It sounds like Kareem wants to say something. Ooh. How are you going to come in here and disrespect Bitcoin like that, son? Let me just delete this thing because it sounds like this might go for a while. <laughs> no, no, no. Listen, listen. All right. We, we've discussed our opinions of Bitcoin long term at length, but for this audience, not as much. Uh, you know, I've come around to be much more pro Bitcoin in the past, you know, this year, 2018, more so than 2017. And I just think 10 years is such a long time for any technology that there is definitely a chance that Bitcoin just has no resemblance of itself 10 years from now. All right. So again, I will remind that Bitcoin is in many ways a living entity that will continue to adapt. And especially when it is truly, truly threatened, when its market cap or when, when its community is truly, truly threatened, it's going to be able to adapt more quickly as it's already shown in the past. A lot of these projects have tremendous potential, but the amount of the amount of infrastructure projects and things that are already based and interconnected with Bitcoin, the amount of hashing power that is directed at the Bitcoin network make it the most likely to be something 10 years from now. Everything else is experimental. Actually, you know maybe not. Maybe Ethereum is a competitive, but realistically However, I do everything that I said, everything that I said was with the same idea that it is more likely to be around in 10 years by a lot than everything else. 
Oh, so you're saying no crypto for 10 years then? I think, I think, well, obviously everything has a chance of succeeding and becoming something great or, well, not everything, but a lot of things do, but I just don't know what they're going to be. And I think that, you know, to trust that Bitcoin is a safe investment for 10 years, I think is risky. Okay. I mean, I, I think it's less risky than basically any other cryptocurrency. I agree with that. Okay. All right, now, Brent, you can go on to the <laughs> SEC. Again. Yeah, we great. Uh, uh, we got Assassin posted in here saying, what do we think about this? That looks like it, uh, claim, breakthrough claims block size increase possible, blah, blah, blah. Like That looks like it's going to take us a lot more research than what we can do. What I can tell you about, however, is Elon Musk talking shit to the <laughs> SEC. That I have plenty of – somebody talking shit I have a lot of expert on. So here we go. This is his tweet. So the quick version is Elon Musk is was fined $20 million. His company was fined $20 million because he, ma he made a tweet saying that he could sell uh, Tesla for four twenty dollars a share, which I think he said was a joke. Um, but the it pumped his price, and now people are thinking he did it intentionally to piss off the short sellers because he's kind of like one of those, like, Guys who's like, oh, fuckers are spreading FUD about my company, about my coin. And he decided he wanted to, like, make them mad, so he tweeted that. I don't know. Who knows what to believe? Um, but it the, the SEC made him step down as uh, chairman of his uh, board directors. And uh, he's still the CEO of the company. But he said, just want to, uh, I guess, say that the Short Seller Enrichment Commission is doing incredible work and the name change is on point. So basically he's saying, like, these guys are helping the short sellers by coming here and fucking with me. <laughs> uh, anyway, like, always appreciate somebody trying to troll the SEC when they own a company that is very much at the mercy of the SEC. <laughs> and, uh... I mean, it's not strategically intelligent. No, 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 it's not. <laughs> it's definitely not, but it's yeah. fun to watch. Um, and one of his, one of his other comments that I didn't grab was he was, uh, he was basically like somebody was saying, you know, Elon, what are you, why are you doing this? Don't you care about the people that invest in your project? And he's like, of course I care about you. But if you think that me like making fun of the SEC is going to cause you pain in the short term, then sell, I don't want you owning my project. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah. shit. Okay. <laughs> so he, uh, this, and why are we talking about this? Uh, exactly right there. Wait, why are they talking about Musk? I had a comment for that. It was in our cryptocurrency. It was a post in our cryptocurrency, but my favorite comment was, has Tesla become an honorary crypto or something by bit a bit. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's why this made like one of the top posts on our cryptocurrency. Cause everybody kind of likes Elon. And at this point, Tesla is an honorary crypto because it, uh, there's, <laughs> there's people saying it's correlated with Bitcoin, but it was like in our, uh, uh, Wall Street bets kind of thing, so that's just pretty much a giant troll of a subreddit. So I don't know. I, as a quick side note, by the way, now that you say that, I guarantee you that if I don't, I don't guarantee you, I'm making a wild guess. That <laughs> if you that if you took every white paper that has been launched, every white paper out there for cryptocurrency, Tesla has to be one of the top five named companies, like real world companies. Oh yeah, that probably that stand there. That they're like, oh, in, like whether it's a hypothetical or whatever, but <laughs> like <laughs> I know I've seen it in a couple. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's move on from this non crypto talk from the R cryptocurrency <laughs> top post of the week. And oh, we, we talked about Binance delisting. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so we can skip that. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's talk about this is the top story of the week. <laughs> this is our top story this week. My favorite story of the week here we go soldier boy is telling him soldier boy <laughs> released a song called bitcoin the song is fucking terrible like <laughs> coming from somebody who's done his share of dancing to soldier boy in a club to a point where i even learned like the correct dance on how to do that shit like crossing your feet Confirm. and all that stuff i've seen it uh and I am so disappointed by how awful this song is. It is so bad. 
So at first I was like, oh great, like people are gonna hear the word Bitcoin and they're gonna uh, they're gonna like it. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out some of the lyrics. I right, I really wanted to like the song. I really did. So um, here's some of the some of the really hard hitting lyrics that I grabbed. Uh, if you want to see all of the lyrics, you can do so here. Stand by. This is where all the lyrics are. I most definitely do. <laughs> all right. Uh, the, some of the lyrics. I got on a computer and I bought a Bitcoin. <laughs> okay. <That's>, okay. <laughs> Send it through the Bitcoin. Watch my band stack. Yeah. I don't know how you send it through the Bitcoin. I don't know what that means. I think he's referencing the fact that Bitcoin is, in fact, a ledger. And ah. he just calls it the Bitcoin. Ah, right, Continue. okay. <laughs> I got Litecoins, Bitcoins, they my favorite one. Yeah. I'm not sure it's which is his favorite. I don't know if Litecoins or Bitcoins are his favorite. I'm not sure which he was referring to. I think he was referring to Bitcoin <laughs> being his favorite. So bullish on Bitcoin, short Litecoin. Um, What's the name of the song again? Bitcoin! Ah, okay. <laughs> God damn it. It should, yeah. be, it should be bullish on Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. Keep with us here. Jesus. All right. Oh, oh my God. I can't believe you missed that. But okay. Good. Good Whoosh. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'm getting the cash and that's each and every day. Yeah. If you don't do the same, please stay out my way, please. So okay. how's he getting the cash? So he's one of those motherfuckers that's getting Bitcoin to make cash. What? No, no, no. He's saying cashier's Bitcoin. It's the vernacular for just having money. Oh. And then he's saying, if you don't do the same, please stay out of my way. He's basically saying, if you're not going to participate in the crypto economy to actually make this motherfucker grow, then please stay out the way. This all makes sense so far. Continue. Ladies and gentlemen, we just needed a translator. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad Kareem <laughs> is here to help us with this. He is an expert on rap. Uh, so... <laughs> so um uh, the the final the the final lyric that i grabbed and this one is the worst of all of them in my opinion is he said gets an aston martin uh, like he he starts talking about an aston martin instead of a lambo like what kind of idiot gets involved in bitcoin and buys an aston martin instead of a lambo well hold on a second aston martins are pretty dope Aston Martin. I would probably rather own an Aston Martin than a Lambo. Yeah, but but like but like you know you gotta own a Lambo just because or a Tesla. It's all you're allowed to own. Like like an idiot. Yeah. No. <laughs> moon boys uh, want Lambos, Brent. You can be a Moon Moon boy. Yeah, all you want. I don't, Brent. I'm so confused here because now he's breaking all the stereotypes that you hate. You, I would think that you were like all over this. You're like, wow, look at him. Yeah. He's breaking the mold. He's saying, I'm not going to buy a Lamborghini. I'm not going to be a moon boy. Expensive I'm going to be a soldier boy. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, Gotta I get a Bitcoin. That wasn't bad. All right, all right. Not bad at all. So, uh, all right, guys, if you want to listen to some real music, I got a <laughs> Toshi Nakamoto and a Vitalik Buterin song. Uh, Automod, Automod said you were posting links too fast. That's yeah. fine. Uh, here, Automod. Hang on. I got a couple of comments from this that we got to post here. First comment. <laughs> it comes from somebody from our hip hop heads. Came here to say he's your problem now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and finally, uh, my other favorite comment: someone bought at the all time high. <laughs> so he's trying like hard to get the price to pump and uh, and do it. So yeah, it is what it is. Uh, by the way, uh, Mike, I can confirm that those are some good crypto songs. By the way, I I didn't uh, I didn't expect anyone to disagree. They're pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I posted one in our Discord yesterday. I'm gonna go grab it right now. That uh, it was in the comments of the of the red section. I hadn't heard this one, even though it's got a lot of views. I'm surprised I hadn't heard this. But this one was great. <laughs> All right, this is right, up there with Hoddle Gang. On. Before we move on, I have a question <clears throat> for the two of you. Okay, if you could pick any artist, any genre to make a song about crypto. Who would you pick? Lil Dicky. <laughs> I don't even know who that is. <laughs> That's right. why I laughed right away. He made a song. Uh, he made a song where he like made a music video and didn't spend any money by like going around and just asking people if he could use their shit. <laughs> and I don't know. Like it was. It, so it's like the exact opposite of whatever cryptocurrency is. So it seems perfect. 
<laughs> yeah, that's true. Fifty Diddy cent. Yeah. A song about Monero. <clears throat> I'm gonna ride that wave. Fifty. Fifty would be really good. Yeah, I would yeah. enjoy that with uh, his Monero hoodie. I'm trying to think of like who who hits mass adoption the most. Like who is the 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 oh. secret person that would like. I'm trying to think international. I don't know that much of international music. International. Huh. I don't know. Who's like the biggest Justin Timberlake? Maybe Trump. maybe Timberlake. <laughs> Timberlake would be a good one. Maybe Psy. Oh man. <laughs> Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus. <laughs> yeah, but I couldn't respect it. Yeah, I'm gonna oh, buy some Mr. Tron Moral today. Blank. Pitbull, Pitbull, actually, that's Tivo. Yeah. You're the man. Pitbull is my answer. I, I submit yeah. Pitbull. Yo, it's Mr. Worldwide buying some Bitcoin. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and Monero is the Spanish word uh, for money, he so he dip. could say that. Oh. <laughs> All right. I didn't hear what you said. I, I'm gonna tell a little story. So if you go listen to our Monero episode, I did it with Kareem. And I was explaining that Monero is, uh, there's a language that's like a developed language. I can't even remember the name of it now. That um, Esperanto. Esperanto, yes. That uh, that Monero means coin in. And and he started, Kareem speaks Spanish, and he starts yelling at me. And he's like, no, Brent, no, stop it. Monero means money in Spanish. And I'm like, I don't think so. And he's like, Brent, I speak Spanish, okay? Just shut up. This is what it's for. And he, he okay, hold up. on. Now, real quick, real quick, because I just want to make it clear that, like, almost every time you're listening to Brent, he's exaggerating. But unfortunately, this is a rare <laughs> exactly what that. happened. This is more or less exactly how it went. Down. And, and then after the episode, I like, I was like, wait, what? And then I realized it's De Niro. <clears throat> and I tell him, and he's like, oh shit. Yeah, no, I was pretty. You know, so Mon, <laughs> yeah, De Niro <laughs> and Moneda, but I mix it up in my brain and embarrass myself and and he has not let me live it down and i understand I, I understand so basically you and 50 cent need to make a money song yeah yeah <laughs> monero it's not special. oh cardi b monero. she can make monero moves <laughs> oh wait that's <laughs> oh my god you can't fuck with me i'll post it on the blockchain <laughs> <laughs> it would be so catchy. Uh, All right, I'm, I'm down with that. Or Drake, Drake would be sweet. They could do it together. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's uh let's go into this story that I found in the R cryptocurrency. This one's a little more mass adoption driven, a little more of a kind of a news story, but I thought it was pretty sweet. So, Brent loves Koreans, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. So this story is basically discussing how the government of South Korea is really embracing what blockchain is becoming. I know we've heard this in a few different parts of the world, but this story I thought was pretty interesting. So they have recently committed $100 million to develop the capital of Seoul. Um, is it Seoul? So that's what it is. Sorry. So um, as Seoul. Seoul as the center of blockchain innovation and we've talked to um, James Duffy from the Loom Network, and he lives in, in South Korea. And basically, this was kind of our first understanding of how big uh, South Korea really embraces cryptocurrency. <clears throat> so, Not nice the, to see Korean. Not nice. Well, uh, well, not nice. Did you appreciate the, the Psy shout-out I gave earlier that both people skipped over? Uh, I thought he was a pretty good person for international Gangnam Style, man. Come on. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> All right. What? Anyway, can we keep? All right. So, anywho, um, so the governor of Seoul, uh, Park Won Soon, visited Zug, Switzerland. Yeah, we've we, been pronouncing we that got, wrong for the entirety of the podcast. We're, cannot, we're pronouncing it Zug, Switzerland, and somebody in our Discord just reamed us a new one and said, "I'm from Switzerland. You have to call this Zug." So it will it will definitely be Zug from now on. Uh, so we visited Switzerland and revealed that they're going to build two uh, business complexes in Seoul, on the west western Seoul. and southeastern Seoul. Seoul. Seoul, like the Seoul, like Seoul music. There you go. Uh, like Seoul uh, Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them. Um, so they're building two business complexes in uh, Seoul. 
on the Western and Southeastern districts, and they're going to accommodate uh, 200 crypto and blockchain companies, as well as having two different training centers. They're going to have another 700 plus experts. So I think that, that was really interesting, and that's a huge development for them. Um, my shout out, hey, not nice. If they need any English speaking uh, guys that can tell jokes, let us know. Uh, we, we'd love to help. Um, and as far as like what they were doing in the city itself, they're implementing it in 14 public uh, public services in five different areas of their of their city. And I thought this was a pretty cool breakdown of five places that they're going to basically focus on immediately for blockchain to improve. Um, the five areas were labor welfare, vehicle history management, certification ins- or certification issuance, donation management, and elections voting. So those are five really interesting areas to start, like really implementing crypto into a large city. So your thoughts, gentlemen. All right, it sounds awesome. I mean, especially the categories, like things like election and voting. I know that uh, there has... Uh, this has its own cryptocurrency that no one. The uses. district wow. I live in has its own cryptocurrency that no one uses. That's awesome. I mean, <clears throat> it's not awesome that no one uses it, but it's awesome that the district tried to to like do their own thing. This has to be good for Icon, right? Like, Icon is very yeah. institutionally tied to some of the for biggest sure. companies in uh, in Korea. So it's good for South Korea, man. They're getting a head start. I, I feel like South Korea, Switzerland, um, you know, specifically, like you just. Not the United States. We are doing whatever the opposite is of getting a head start on this. So, yeah, I mean, definitely not the, yeah, head the start economy. that we took with Silicon Valley. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, but this is cool though. I, I've always wanted to visit South Korea. By the way, it's, it seems very futuristic, and and these seem like really cool uh, implementations. Which, you know, looks like that's going to be one of the first countries. Whenever the time comes that we actually start seeing these technologies truly implemented and truly used at a mass scale, uh, it's a pretty good chance that we're going to see it abroad uh, in one of these places first. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm I'm building the crypto around the world world tour as we speak. We got Zug, we got Malta, we got South Korea or you know Seoul, South Korea. Maybe um, you know Ger- uh, Berlin. Probably we'll go see IOTA guys and. Uh. <laughs> so here's my here's my question about Malta. Has other than exchanges though, are is that are they flourishing cryptocurrency wise? I don't know. I feel like every time I've seen it, it's something to do with an exchange and like, Maybe like you could finance. be, yeah, well, that's an exchange. That's an exchange. Yeah, yeah, but it's right. the biggest one. Like they uh, they they brought I, them I, I there with like, an intention to make them like the blockchain island. So that I think they're doing lots of things that are should that should be. Uh, yeah, what I would imagine that they're more doing is is they're creating the infrastructure, and there's going to be a lot of. Uh, I think exchanges are the only like public service that we're going to really have access to for the immediate time being. So that's why it's the only thing that's going to be at our in our forefront. Right. No, I, I get what you guys are saying. So all I'm saying is, when it comes to Malta, I'm still a little. I guess I'm more wait and see because I feel like South Korea or Switzerland. You look at these true implementations where they're trying to go wide, whereas like. I could see Malta developing into something like a Jersey or Grand Cayman where it's like this offshore you know, right. uh, tax haven or it's just like money goes through. But that doesn't mean – What is the gonna... rough population of Malta? Or I don't, like, I don't really know anything I, I mean it's really small. It. I don't know. I want to say it's under a million to be honest, but I'm not sure. I, I could be wrong. I want to say 800K or something. Let's see. Malta population. It's not – yeah, I was going to say it's not even close to a million. It's, ha- it's less than half a million. It, at least it was in 2016. <clears throat> It's a really small yeah. island. Yeah. Anyway, but cool stuff with South Korea. We do have five minutes left. Usually, we'd like to ask if anybody, anything else anybody wants to bring up or if they want to participate or if they have any questions or any. Uh, we, could, we could unmute you. You could type a question. Yeah. Uh, you could Total ask goes. us personal things, maybe. <laughs> Whoa. You can ask Mike personal things, maybe. <laughs> no, I'm not going to solve the puzzle. Yes, we already solved it. Stop trying. Every Just let everybody you know that it's solved. Don't worry about it. We'll announce at some point. <laughs> uh, All right, Grindlord, I don't know anything about Vercoin. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, we have not researched Vercoin. We, it's one of the uh, 
it's one of the higher market caps that we haven't gotten to yet, so we're good, we're going to be getting to it. But I don't want to comment do on something that I don't know. Although I like ASIC resistance, so I'll, I'll do give you this in, uh, for what it's worth, uh, Grenlor. I think uh, as far as ASICs, um, I don't know if this is defeatist, but I like I think I subscribe to the idea that you can't fight it. I don't think it's going to be possible. Like ultimately, if you have a consistent algorithm or a consistent process, somebody's going to be able to build. Uh, something that specializes in it and, and does it better. So I th I think that there's two solutions there. Uh, one is you could take the route of uh, uh, a system that's constantly changing. Uh, I don't know how, how difficult that is. I don't remember who was doing that. Was that Monero, I think, Brent, or something like that? And then I also like the approach that maybe we just need to open up to ASICs more. And instead of having one company build all the ASICs, if we have a more like supply to the market and stuff, wouldn't have some of the issues. No, I, I, I don't have any problem with forking the code as soon as you see too much ASIC centralization, just change it each time. Like, I don't know how hard that is, but I uh, I don't know what Monero is doing as far as, like, uh, rotating that, but I don't know. And, uh, uh, Assassin asked, uh, I'm really curious about the forwarding blocks thing. Assassin, I promise you we will we will look at that. We'll probably talk about it Friday on the show, but that's not – it's that seemed like something so dense that I didn't want to just read, like, the – you know the intro to the article while we were talking here and then and then comment on it that's something that i would need to do you know a decent amount of research on before before i felt comfortable throwing out an opinion there are plenty of things that i'll throw out a completely unfounded opinion on for instance whether that puzzle is money laundering or not but <laughs> but uh the future of bitcoin and forwarding blocks yeah. is not one of them but i i and like it was beautiful to see though because that is so you like it was somebody was said something and you're like well i don't know yeah, that's definitely what happened. <laughs> <laughs> then, like within a minute and a half, it was full loop. <laughs> I, I trust me, I know where my unfounded opinions lie. And uh, the problem with the three of us is that we're really good at making stuff up and making it sound really smart. So the problem is when we get lost, we're able to like da -da 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 -da, just try to step out. It doesn't work every time, but it's fun <laughs> when it does. And uh, and let's see. So, um, see a coin killed ASICs. Any thoughts? Yeah, again, same thing with with ASICs. Uh, I as long as you can keep killing them, I don't think I think that they help. They create centralization in the um, in in the proof of work networks. So, but at the same time, if you can't keep killing them, then it kind of yeah. Why are you doing it? So, uh, I, I, it's a little bit different for the small coins that like forked off of a different algorithm where the ASICs just kind of happen to work for them. Maybe forking off of those or, or changing so that they, they those ASICs don't work is easier uh, and more permanent if it's a small coin where somebody won't go through the the process of developing an ASIC for it. So, yeah, you know, another plausible solution and. Um is I believe Horizon hasn't implemented it, but they talked about the idea of if you have like a, something like a directed acyclic graph where you have a ton of miners that have distributed blocks instead of like everybody's competing for the same block, then you could lower the difficulty and make it so that even a house computer can uh, compete right. and actually win blocks. So it makes it, it doesn't mean that ASICs wouldn't have an advantage. And also there is value. Like I, it is important to remember that ASICs are providing computing power really efficiently. So there is centralization problems, but also they are contributing to the network uh, in an efficient way, right? And if we also care about other things like the environmental damage of cryptocurrency um, and things like that, then it's not... All I'm saying is that yes, ASICs do present problems, but it doesn't mean that the only way to solve those problems is to eliminate ASICs. There could be other solutions. Agreed. So, so Pro said, "Wait a minute, didn't Pro die last week?" <laughs> what? I, 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 this just popped into my head. I remember somebody saying that that somebody passed away, and I thought it was Pro. Did somebody like take on the name as a, <laughs> or was it just a troll last week that we never were were privy to? <clears throat> Brent, you can say some cringy shit sometimes. Ah, he's back. All right. Ah, it was a troll. 
It was a troll. I know. I literally like <laughs> last week. We literally thought that he died. So I, I'm, I'm, I just happened to see his name. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. Well, they, that's what they told us, and they really like crushed us at the beginning. Yeah, we had a moment of silence and everything. Yeah, we. Uh, if you, I, I don't know if that made it on the video, but if you go back and watch that video, there was definitely a a, <laughs> a point where we're like, oh wow, that's terrible. And wait, Buddha had this story wait, what, where you wait, died right after he banned you. <laughs> wait, guys, what if we're actually tapping into some crazy like moderator drama, like some Game of Thrones shit here? They were trying to, uh, you know, sabotage and remove Pro from the power dynamic. Look, oh, there was even banning involved. This is mm, House of Twist right here. <laughs> that, that, that was like uh, announcing that uh, Rosenstein was quitting <laughs> while he was on his way. Let's just see what happens. <laughs> uh, well, we're glad you're alive, Pro, for sure. Good read, Brent. <laughs> I, I would have I never said out loud. I would have been like, what? <laughs> uh, sometimes it helps to have me around where where i just don't give a shit what i say so you know yeah yep at least helps is, is one of the words for that no 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 it's it's true it helps like eight to ten percent of the time it's really helpful <laughs> <laughs> you gotta admit look i i think we have awesome balance <laughs> yeah we do but also we are at a time gentlemen so if you guys enjoyed all of our banter please subscribe to our podcast crypto basic podcast.com <laughs> All right, um, thanks for joining us. We'll be back same bat time, same bat channel next week, literally. and uh, and if I'll I'll make sure to, assassin, I'll make sure I have something to say about that about that article, even if you don't listen to our um to to our Friday flagship. And just a quick shout out to our sound producer Tim Tivo. He was <laughs> the best. Mama. Nah, as as GP gets all the shout outs. Well, no, 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 our, we no, we don't do the Friday flagship in here. We do that's just that's our podcast. We release. Uh, yeah, we have on a Friday. Friday recording on YouTube and podcast land. Yep. All right, thanks everybody. Thanks again for coming in, guys. We appreciate you. Peace out. We out. Boom boom. <laughs>